Okay, in this video, I want to discuss the idea of radex or the base of a number in both RS Logix 500 and Studio 5000. All right, now this is a pretty underutilized feature that both of these programs have, and it makes sense why because they're a little bit confusing and the times where you'd actually use them can be somewhat rare, but I do want to just walk you through them because this is something that a lot of people aren't familiar with. And so basically this is, I have, I have RS Logix 5000 here with the program that I created. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the data table files and I'm gonna open up a binary, okay? And now in this binary, you can see I have just a bunch of ones and zeros. And this is what they call in RS Logix 500, a word, it's a 16 bit word. And the radex here is called binary. Okay, and what that means is whatever inputs or outputs may be running, that creates a certain value. So, you know, I come in here and I'll just add some ones in, okay? Just creating a number. And this is a binary number. And we could sit down and figure it out uh, mathematically if we wanted to, or we can use the radex just to change its style. So if I wanted to know what this number was in binary or an octal, I could just change it to octal, 42,020. And again, this is an octal, which is a base eight system. So there would be no eights and nines in there. If I wanted to know what it was in uh, decimal, 17,424. If I wanted to know uh, hexadecimal, 4410. Now, Radex is not a term that is commonly found in mathematics. If I talk to a lot of math instructors, they've never heard that term before. So I can change it to octal, hexadecimal, so forth. So let's say I take this to decimal and I take this value to decimal. Let's say I come to my B3 and I put it into decimal and I give this value uh, 31,457. All right, and I hit enter. Then I come here type in the exact same value because I'm in decimal. I can change this to let's say octal and I'm getting the same value. Notice they put the underscore here, which is really nice because an octal system is grouped into typically in uh, groups of three. This one doesn't do that, but it's still 75,341 and that's the value you're getting here. Let's say you want to know what it is in octal, 7AE1, come here, hexadecimal, 7AE1, all right? Now, this is fun to know, but where might I use this, all right? Well, I'll go to RS Logix 500 because that's the PLC I have hooked up right now to kind of demonstrate that. So I have a number of inputs on slot one activated, and I want to know what the value of that is and I wanna be able to look at it. So I wanna to go to my input data table file, and I can do this something very similar to this in RS Logix 500, and here it is right here. So this is showing me all of the inputs that are activated or deactivated on one of my cards. Now let's say I have some type of QC machine that goes through and reads everything to make sure that something is activated, uh, to make sure that the product is sound. So let's say I want to compare all the inputs to some value. So what I would do is I would go offline and I'll grab an equal instruction. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say i colon 1 dot 0. Then my source will be b3 colon 0 dot 0. So the whole word or just 0 should be good. All right. Now I'm gonna make this an output. So I'll just make this some random output that I have. So you can see here that based upon my input value, okay, I'm getting a decimal value of 17,673. I can verify that by looking at this. That's what that value means. But my B3 here is a bunch of random ones and zeros right now. That's why this is not true. So how do I want to approach this? Do I want to come here and try to type in all the ones here to match that, to make it equal? No, I don't want to do that. So I want to come here, change this to decimal, 
type this in 17,673, hit enter. And now I know this is equal. So if all of these inputs are lined up perfectly with the memory that I've created here, then this is good and that means the product is molded or built correctly. This is just one example, all right? Um, there are some other examples of where you might want to convert over to Octal if you're comparing to uh, like a Siemens PLC because um, they don't have eights and nines in their inputs and outputs. And so there are some times where that can be a really useful thing. Or when you're going back to an older, if you're trying to communicate with an older PLC5, which is also programmed in Octal and didn't have any uh, eights and nines. So there are some reasons why you'd use this, but I just wanted to do an introduction so you could have an idea of what the rate X is and how you can change the base of a value in both um, RS Logics 500 and Studio 5000 and RS Logics 5000. It would work the same. So anyway, uh, I hope this video was helpful if you were trying to understand some of the more obscure functions in uh, uh, Rockwell Automation PLC programming videos. All right, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe.